If you're trying to fly from New York to Paris and scrolling through booking sites, you'll notice that the flight time is going to run you 7 to 8 hours. If you wanted to make that trip in 1965, you would call your travel agent and they would tell you the same thing, about 8 hours. If you were to call that same travel agent in 1980 and had a spare $5,000 lying around, well, that's a different story, but more on that later. In the past 10 years, we've seen major breakthroughs in commercial space travel, yet the speed of our commercial flights has largely remained static for decades. Why is that? What is preventing us from getting to New York to Paris in less than two hours? Let's talk hypersonics. We as humans love to go fast. Since Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in 1947, humans have been on a quest to up the ante on rapid travel. Today, commercial aircraft operate at subsonic speeds, which refers to speeds relative to the speed of sound, around 768 miles per hour. Modern aircraft, however, travel at a cruising speed of about 600 miles per hour, a benchmark that has existed since the dawn of the jet age in the late 1950s. But once air travelers got a taste of those speeds, they wanted more. Sprinkle in a little bit of Cold War era competition and that mid-century boom in commercial aviation, and it sets the stage for the advancements in aviation needed to get a person from point A to point B in a hurry. By 1967, Boeing engineers were hard at work developing an aircraft capable of supersonic speeds, which means it could travel between Mach 1, the speed of sound, and Mach 5. The product of these efforts was the Concorde SST, Super Sonic Transport. From 1976 to 2003, the supersonic revolution in air travel enabled transatlantic flights in half the time. That's right, New York to Paris in three and a half to four hours. So what happened? Well, a lot it turns out. First, let's talk about what the Concorde did right. Its innovative aerodynamic design featured a unique delta wing and droop nose which minimized drag. It was also made from lightweight aluminum alloys and titanium and was propelled by four engines that could produce 38,000 pounds of thrust with afterburners that could be engaged during takeoff and climb to give the aircraft an extra boost of power. Truly a marvel of supersonic aviation. Unfortunately, because of the noise associated with supersonic flight, you've surely heard the term sonic boom, it was restricted from flying long stretches over land. Its limited seating capacity also made tickets prohibitively expensive for everyday flyers, costing a whopping five to seven thousand dollars for a one-way ticket. That's more than 15 grand in 2023 prices. Throw in a high-profile crash in July 2000 and a rough stretch for the air travel industry in the aftermath of 9-11 and Concorde shuttered its doors in 2003. The supersonic revolution burned bright and it burned fast. For the last 20 years, commercial travelers have been saddled with the same long transatlantic flight times that existed since the 1950s, with some improvements made with the introduction of long-range aircraft in the early 2000s. Still, the question remains, is it possible to go faster? Can we travel from New York to Paris in less than the time it takes to watch The Aviator? The answer is yes, but it's a complicated yes. Let's take a look at the challenges of high-speed air travel. First of all, propulsion systems capable of efficiently accelerating to supersonic speeds and maintaining those speeds at cruising altitudes are incredibly difficult to produce. Couple that with the fact that parts needed to construct these engines need to be lightweight enough to achieve the necessary lift, and you've got one major hurdle to overcome. The next challenge is friction. Traveling at supersonic speeds creates massive amounts of friction on the fuselage and wings of an aircraft. This friction can cause structural damage, and the heat produced can cause the metals in the aircraft to expand, which also threatens structural integrity. Fueling a high-speed aircraft is another huge obstacle. Of course, it takes a massive amount of fuel to propel those powerful engines, but fuel also adds weight, a major enemy of going fast. At high speeds and high temperatures, fuel can vaporize or ignite, so efforts need to be made to contain it in stable, highly resistant materials. And if that wasn't enough, it wouldn't surprise you to learn that operating an aircraft at these speeds can be challenging to maneuverability, communication, navigation, timing, and more. It's a lot. When you look at supersonic air travel from 30,000 feet or 60,000 feet if you're the Concorde, 
it makes sense that there hasn't been much headway in the industry in recent decades. But all of that may be about to change. Some modern aviation companies are exploring not only supersonic air travel, but hypersonic air travel, or commercial aircraft capable of achieving five times the speed of sound and beyond. One such company, Hermius, which is based in Atlanta, Georgia, is working to develop a reusable hypersonic aircraft that can make that theoretical trip from New York to Paris in just 90 minutes. You see, in the years since the Concorde, there have been great strides made in related industries like space and defense that have pioneered technology that can be used in hypersonics. Hermius is leveraging modern technologies like advanced metal 3D printing to create some of the most complex parts needed for hypersonic travel and to iterate their designs quickly and efficiently. They've also pioneered a new type of engine called Chimera, which is a combination between the traditional turbojet engine used in commercial aircraft and a ramjet engine typically used in missile and ballistic systems. By transitioning to a ramjet engine at high speeds mid-flight, the aircraft can use the pressure from the outside air to propel the plane faster. Hermes is currently building out the first phase of their hypersonic aircraft, called Quarter Horse, which is set to be a proof of concept for the Chimera engine unmanned but capable of reaching speeds beyond Mach 4. Their goal is to have a manned aircraft, what they're calling Halcyon, which can reach Mach 5 by 2029. While space may be the final frontier, it's not the only frontier for innovation. Exciting companies in aviation are picking up where trailblazers and supersonics left off, paving the way for a future where that 90-minute transcontinental flight may be a reality.